Welcome once again into the Soccer OG World Cup Daily. Uh, unless you're joining us for the first time, then welcome into the Soccer OG World Cup Daily. Where have you been? I have noticed an uptick in the podcast numbers. So a lot more people, and the, the reality is, and I talked to a lot of you out there, you're in your cars, this is the whole idea of this, you need some information, that's all I'm listening to on my drives. I'll like maybe listen to some Sirius XM, Counterattack with Tony and Eric, because it's easy, but then I'll put some podcasts on and I get informed. Man, there's some good ones out there. And I'm glad you've uh, chosen ours. I'm very proud of what we've been able to do. And uh, hopefully we can expand, but this was obviously a, 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 a big moment for our, our, uh, our, our brand here. So thanks for joining in. And the YouTube numbers are good, but the podcast numbers are up, but that's, that's the reason why. We're all listening and we all want to get as smart as we can. And on to this final day of the round of 16, we finally had... Uh, something to get excited about. Let's face it, these games were good. I mean, watching Brazil demolish Korea, bittersweet in this household. But even if after a while, you're just like, okay, you want to, after other games that either, you know, in a couple of them going to the penalties and then others were like the England-Senegal result, the USA game was messy. We wanted something we can hang. Japan-Croatia was, uh, let's face it, that wasn't a classic, but it was it, in comparison to everything else, you'll take it. We got it all on Tuesday. This historic result for Morocco, first time in the quarterfinals. What is it? The fourth African team to make it. A big moment for African football and Arab football. And then, followed by a game that was 6-1. So obviously it was a blowout. But one of the most, maybe the most compelling game in this tournament because of the circumstances all around Ronaldo. Everything that's happened two months prior, everything we read about, about Manchester United and Piers Morgan, it's coming down to this. You don't see players of his stature playing in a decent vein of form, which he was with Portugal here. You don't see them getting benched. And we'll talk about that in a little bit and what it, a landmark decision it was by Fernando Santos to go another direction. Gonzalo Ramos now a household name. These are, st when you get a story you never really thought or dreamt could come to fruition because it wasn't, no, one's, no one mentioned Gonzalo Ramos' name. It was Rafael Leal. It was no Gonzalo. But to hear that guy's name now, unbelievable. So these two games made up for it. Again, in our sport, it pays off to be patient. Uh, we are invigorated. And of course, we get no games tomorrow, which I think we should all take advantage of. I'm going to sleep in a little bit. I had a couple radio requests for like 5 a.m. East Coast or West Coast time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a good sleep. Soccer OG World Cup Daily available where all podcasts are available in audio format. Also on here on YouTube under my name, Max Bretos. You can check us out here on our social media handles. A lot of interaction. Drop us a comment there. Drop us a comment on YouTube. Uh, we try to respond to as much as we can. And we have a very special guest today. Uh, obviously, we have no game tomorrow. We're going to bring a lot more guests. I'm very excited. Tony Kerki, who will join me right here. You want to stick around for him. He, work, he has a YouTube show, Lo Mejor del Mundial. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for that. I wasn't prepared. Uh, you remember from Tudene, some big plans for him coming up. He is a delightful guy. He knows his soccer. Uh, his YouTube, if you're looking for something in Espanol, check that out. Tony Kerki, Lo Mejor del Mundial. Uh, and you can enjoy our conversation. We'll talk a lot about Morocco and, and what this means in Spain because things are going crazy in Morocco, in Portugal, in Spain. Do the Swiss care? Of course they care, of course. They got to be disappointed because they've gotten to this point in a lot of big competitions. They would like to figure they're going over the hump. So we'll get to that interview uh, shortly and we'll have some great stuff for you in the days ahead. You don't want to miss tomorrow's show. We're going to talk about the biggest game in World Cup history. I'm not going to say any more than that. The biggest game in World Cup history. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. That's a tease. I bet you it came over really nice on the uh, podcast format. Let us begin with Morocco and Spain. Scoreless through extra time. Goes to penalties just like we had in Japan and Croatia. Where the, Croatias, the Croatians, just, the Japanese didn't show up for the penalties. Same could be said for the Spaniards. The uh, Spanish had 75% of the possession, just 13 shots on, towards goal, only one on target. So it, it was remarkable to see how Morocco played this game 
and how they were able to defend and turn Spain over and put them in non-menacing positions. And Morocco, you've got to believe. Are they getting the semifinals? Probably not. And they're running into Portugal at the wrong time. But they become the fourth African team to make it uh, this far to a quarterfinal. You had Cameroon in 1990, Senegal in 2002, Ghana in 2010. And actually, now that I think about it, all three of those had a really good shot at the semifinals. Do you remember those games? Cameroon was beating England. Ghana and Luis Suarez. And Senegal, was it Denmark? Those were all highly competitive games, man. So why not Morocco? Uh, Jawad El Yamia saying honored Arab and African, uh, honored for Arab and African football. That's a, a very important dual position here. Uh, there were a lot of Arab teams here, Saudi Arabia, obviously, Qatar and Tunisia. And uh, even though it's two different continents, the, that, that Arab part of the world uh, can certainly feel uh, a, a sense of uh, deservingness for being able to get this result. Uh, they will share in the celebration for Morocco. And this Morocco team, as we've said on this program, is very European. And we saw it with the class of the players. I mean, these are fun guys to watch. Uh, Ziyech, we've talked about a lot. Bufal, Yassim Bono, the goalkeeper who uh, has staked his moment forever with that performance. Mazrahi and Ashraf Hakimi. Man. One of the five best players at this World Cup. One of the five best players. I mean, he just doesn't lose a duel. He goes up that right flank. He separates from nobody can mark him. In space or on a dead run, you, no one can touch him. He just does whatever he wants. If that guy was on the French team or the Brazil, if he was on Brazil, well, engrave the trophy. Just so elegant, this team as well. But they can grind it out. They knew that they were going to let Spain what, get 75% of possession and they were going to sit there and absorb. But they never really gave up too many chances. In fact, against the counter, Morocco was getting some, some good looks. I love uh, Sofiane Bouffal was creating things. There was some wide play. Again, a team doing very well in the wide areas. The USA certainly would like to uh, uh, duplicate that. Um, I get after 90 minutes, one shot on target for both team. So it wasn't a, a pleasant on the eyes affair other than it being a round of 16 in the World Cup with an incredible atmosphere and a historic moment aligned and a historic meltdown for Spain. Luis Enrique, the manager, I, I love this guy, but he's so intense with these trainings and so forth. Uh, his team just got worse and worse as the tournament went on. Really, that's factual. 7-1 win versus Costa Rica. A tie with Germany, which they should have won. A loss to Japan, which they probably should have tied. And then this against Morocco. Uh, Shadira had a huge chance in the 104th. Uh, Wadi Shadira had a huge chance in the 104th minute. Uh, he plays at Serie B body. So Italian, Italy making it into this position. Uh, hats off to, look, this Morocco team. They have, we said it yesterday, they have players from everywhere. Uh, Hakimi, we mentioned from Spain. Players from Italy. Players from France. I mean, I think it was like seven countries that were, uh, you know, naturalized. And that's a credit to the Moroccan FA and the recruitment of players because they're getting these guys to buy in. I mean, how does uh, Hakimi say, no, if he has a chance to play for Spain, I mean, he's looking at that team going, uh, I'm going to win a World Cup with these guys. He went to Morocco. So unbelievable recruitment and Morocco feels like they have something they could stay. They have a very good FA, which is going to help them. Uh, other FAs should be paying attention to that. Morocco now undefeated in five World Cup matches. So they will move on. Uh, this is gonna be a very difficult stretch for Spain. I, I feel some relief because my final pick of Spain versus Denmark is now done and dusted. So I don't have a dog in the fight so I can give you uh, analysis without any angle uh, to draw the teams that I thought were gonna do well. Cause I was wrong. I was wrong. So uh, hugely disappointing for Luis Enrique. He's gonna be way under fire for this defeat. And, you know, they lost to Russia in the round of 16, uh, where they had a huge advantage. And they, uh, uh, four losses in five shootouts. Unbelievable. So they lost in penalties as well to Russia. So uh, going backwards, just like that, after that really positive run in the Nations League of this year and the Euros, 
Um, I, I, Ashraf Hakimi, if you didn't hear the story, he's a guy uh, who's, who was born in Madrid. His mother was working there um, in a clerical role. His father, they were hardworking immigrants. Uh, a wonderful story. Now he's one of the biggest soccer stars on the planet. Portugal and Switzerland. No Ronaldo in the starting 11. No Ronaldo. And this, we said, it's built in over the last two, three weeks. The interview with Piers Morgan, the fallout with Manchester United. He's looking for a new club, the big contract. Uh, all this hullabaloo around Fernando Santos. Uh, they must have had enough of Ronaldo, but this was not a personal move. We saw him uh, have a hissy fit at the end of the South Korea game. And it's very important to say that Fernando Santos said that this was a tactical move not a punishment by any means. So it made sense. But everyone thought it was going to be Rafael Leao. I want to give you the starting 11 here for uh, Portugal because uh, we see the introduction of Gonzalo Ramos who's been playing great at Benfica. We'd all like to say we're watching more Benfica games. We'll watch some of the Champions League, but if someone says they're exclusively watching Benfica games other when they played PSG, they are, are, are giving you a line because there's so many other games and I know you, we all watch the highlights but we really don't know enough about Benfica. But this is a team that I did watch and look threatening in the Champions League to get very far. And now they're producing. Uh, Silva has had a chance to play here. Uh, Benfica is uh, Enzo Fernandez as well. Don't forget about him playing for Argentina. So, João Felix, Gonzalo Ramos comes in for Ronaldo. Bruno Fernandez, that's your front line. That Bernardo Silva, he was my man of the match, if you can believe that. I thought he was fan. I'm, now, Gonzalo Ramos is the man of the match. But Bernardo Silva with William Carvalho and Otavio. Rafael Guerrero, Ruben Diaz, Pepe back. And Diogo Dalo, Diogo uh, Costa in goal. So not exactly an 11 that's going to... I mean, they're very good players. Uh, and obviously, Bruno Fernandez, Bernardo Silva, and João Felix. Uh, but look... Uh, uh, Cancelo, no, uh, not there. There is, you figure there, you no know, Cristiano Ronaldo, which everyone's saying that he is such a key to Portugal. Well, not on Tuesday. And I want to just talk about Fernando Santos and the stones that he had to make this move. Fernando Santos, uh, he's been there forever. And when we have seen players of the stature of Cristiano Ronaldo or teams of the stature of Cristiano Ronaldo, the players always really win. Now, we've had some success stories here with Luka Modric and Lionel Messi, older players that are incorporated and doing very well for their national teams. We've had some bad situations with Uruguay. Uh, that golden generation kept around five, six players. They probably should have shuffled them out, frankly. And we have seen it in 2006, Italy win the World Cup. All those guys come back. All those guys come back. They're old and they didn't, Italy didn't have a grown-up conversation with them. And Italy finished last in their group behind Paraguay and New Zealand. We have saw it with the 2010 Spanish team. And they came back in 2014 and they got worked. So uh, sometimes you've got, it's, you don't have a track record of people. I mean, as, as, as much as it's, I feel it's pretty obvious, you don't have a track record of managers kind of cutting bait and moving forward. Well, a tactical move was here, and then Gonzalo Ramos goes on to score three goals. A rare hat trick. Uh, Eusebio had one. Ronaldo had one. And that was just incredible by Fernando Santos. Because for our perspective, it feels like Cristiano Ronaldo, and Cristiano Ronaldo made him a champion too in 2016, that this is, this is Ronaldo's team, right? Uh, to a point, but those managers always seem to concede, in my estimation, and he didn't. And look what happened. This was the best game Portugal played, I can recall. I look back at all of them. I mean, I didn't watch 1966, I'm sorry. But when you go back to the era of Ronaldo and a little prior to that, you know, uh, even uh, with the team in the 90s, they didn't have games like these. I mean, Rui Costa, uh, Luis Figo, they didn't have games they were like this in the knockouts. That was terrifying. The Swiss were just blown out of there. A hat trick for Gonzalo Ramos. João Felix, uh, another big story because of how free he looked in this game. Always with the binds at Atletico Madrid. He took a shot at his club and he was, uh, you know, he, it's like a slow death at Atletico for this record signing. And Bruno Fernandes comes back in the lineup and plays well. And Bernardo Silva was incredible. Pepe scoring a goal. This was just a beautiful thing to watch. 
has broken at times it looked against South Korea and with the shadow of Ronaldo quickly removed and now you move forward and you tell yourself is this the way Portugal looks for the rest of the tournament? There's no way they can bring Ronaldo back. That's what's so amazing of Fernando Santos' move is in these 90 minutes, it's not even a discussion. Cristiano Ronaldo is now a super sub and a heck of a super sub at that. That's it. Gonzalo Ramos, it's his World Cup because it could not have worked out any better. It was like 20 minutes where the Swiss were engaged here and then Portugal just slammed them. It was two zip at the half. Uh, Ramos had the two. Rafael Guerrero in the 55th. Akanje got one back in the 58th for the Swiss. And Rafael Leal, who, who came on late, he scored a goal. I mean, Rafael Leal is 23. João Felix is 23. Ramos now all of a sudden becomes this lock-in starter. He's 21. It's, you know, again, not disciplinary reasons. This was tactical. And, you know... Beating a Swiss team that, you know, are so, uh, they are so defensively tidy. And you rarely see Jan Sommer. I mean, Jan Sommer was set alight. He's one of the best keepers we have. It was a stunning, stunning result. Coupled with Morocco. These are, this has been the best day of the World Cup. Hands down. Despite all the surprises, this has been the best day of the World Cup. This is the good stuff. This is what gets your blood pumping and was going to make you tell all your friends to watch the Soccer OG World Cup Daily. So once again, as we look at the bracket, the quarterfinals are as follow. Friday, Croatia, Brazil at 7 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Eastern. 11 a.m. Pacific, the Netherlands on Argentina. And Morocco, Portugal will be the 7 a.m. game on Saturday. England, France will wrap it up Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Unbelievable. So good. Don't forget the Soccer OG World Cup Daily, available where all podcasts are available. Soccer OG here on uh, YouTube under my name, Max Bretos. Remember tomorrow, the biggest game in World Cup history. I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. But right now we have an interview. Tony Kerki joining us here to have a conversation about Morocco, Spain, and how he has viewed this Qatari World Cup. Soccer OG rolls on. As promised, we are going to have some guests. We're going to have some great guests, including this next gentleman, uh, Tony Kerki, who uh, you could see on Lo Mejor del Mundial on YouTube and his social media handles. Tony, I'm going to spell your last name because we're saying it correctly. It's Kerki, but it's spelled C-H-E-R-C-H-I, correct? That's correct. How are you, my friend? Doing great. It's great to talk to you, and uh, I enjoy. Tony always has great insight on this game. Um all over uh, globally, uh, he's a real student of it all. So I'm excited to talk about him. And I know the big story, certainly one of the big stories, because I've been talking about on my show, how it feels like the rest, the big UEFA powerhouses, Brazil and Argentina are moving away from the rest of the world. And I want a proper World Cup. And I thought Qatar would provide it with USA and Senegal and uh, Japan and Korea in the round of 16. And none of them made a breakthrough. And then Morocco did. So uh, what does this mean for the tournament? I, I think it's good, Max, because um, f uh, from one side, you have like the, the traditionalists of this game that really want to see the big uh, teams, you know, the, the historic teams, the ones that have lifted the trophy before, uh, all together in the quarterfinals. But uh, I mean, Morocco has been playing a, a pretty nice uh, soccer, a, a style that it's good uh, for the, I mean, regular or casual fan, but they have, I mean, they have talent indeed. But for me today, what happened was that Spain uh, lost it. I mean, you cannot go uh, given a thousand passes in midfield and then just, you know, shooting a it goal. Was, one, you're not exaggerating. One time. It was one a thousand time. passes. No, no, I wasn't. Yeah, it, a thousand and nineteen. I think it was a, the <laughs> correct number. So if, if you do that and you just re record one shot on goal, there's something wrong with you. There's a, and and all credit, all credit due to to Morocco because they they did what they had to do. You know. I I, I agree with you, and um, 
Uh, I'm going to get to the the heavyweights because at the end of the day, we have these incredible matchups to look forward to. But how do you think it's going to be for Luis Enrique, the Spanish press? And we know El Chiringuito and all these shows are going to have the knives out. What's it good? What's the reception going to be like for Luis Enrique in Spain? I mean, I don't see uh, I don't see a, a way that Luis Enrique remains a, a Spain head coach because he's like that. You know, he he's defiant. So if he wins, it, there's no way to to go uh, against him, you know, and, and although he didn't win at the Euros, he, he, he did it. Uh, I mean, a good job. And then at Nations League. He, he went to the finals against uh, France, uh, Spain played well. He, um, I mean, he gambled on some young players and they did well. So, so he had a lot of arguments uh, on his side, you know? But this, this Spain team, I mean, the potential, I know they lack some strikers because uh, th there's a, a problem with that in Spain for, for a long time, but there's no, that's no excuse to go play in that style of football, that, that style of soccer that is going to get you nowhere. So for me, there's no way that he remains a, 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 the national uh, coach for Spain. And look, Tony, I picked Spain to win this. And after they beat Costa Rica, I was like, all right, my pick looks good. And then a tie with a, what looks in hindsight a, a poor Germany, a loss to Japan, and now losing in penalties to Morocco. And I'm with you. I mean, this Morocco team does well I and mean, Bono is, is a, one of the top keepers in the competition. He was awesome, yeah. Hakimi, probably the best right back. Uh, Ziyech. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, put it, I will put it in the conversation. Yeah, they have guys that you can put up there, but uh, this was a, a team with a very good spirit and that's why I think they succeeded where others did not. And in a, I would love to see, I would have loved to have seen USA versus Australia in the quarterfinals. I would have loved to have seen Korea versus Japan. It didn't happen. And then I think about it. And then I go, well, the good news, <laughs> I get <laughs> the Netherlands and Argentina and I get England and France. And I think it's proper. Now, it's good to have a, it's when the quarterfinals rolled around. If it was Japan and Korea and it was USA, Australia, they won't, wouldn't be good games. These are going to be great games. What are the which one of these? And we can include certainly uh, Brazil and uh, Croatia there. Which of the games do you think is the uh, the most compelling? I mean, I, I would bet for the uh, France England uh, because they have performed very well. Both teams, um, they have scored a lot of goals. They have, if if you uh, if you tell me to pick three really offensive, um, look for look for the uh, all their goal teams. I would go for Brazil, France, and England. They have, I mean, they have a lot of options from the midfield on. You know. In in England, if you go out with uh, uh, Bukayo Saka and Phil Foden, then you can take him out and then put uh, Rashford and put Grealish, and you can even not give any minutes to James Madison, which is a, a an awesome player, you know. And and if you go uh, with France, uh, I said at the beginning of the World Cup that for me France was the uh, they have the better attack, but then they got the injury on uh, Benzema on uh, Nkunku. So the, their bench is uh, a little weak if you compare them to England or to Brazil. But that, that one should be the game that, that gives us fireworks, you know? That's, that's what I'm betting on. And Brazil, I mean, what, what they did yesterday, I know it was South Korea, which is a, a team that doesn't have, a, I mean, a, a pretty successful history in, in World Cups, but they, they were playing a, another level, you know, another sport. So if you, if you see Brazil and... I'm sorry that to go back to Spain, but if you see if you see that game from Brazil yesterday and you see Spain today, I mean, it's, it's, there's there's a clear difference in terms of what you want to do in a game. What you what you're looking for when you put your eleven uh, on the field. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. And I know Brazil has the Netherlands, and the, I, I think the Netherlands. Are, I mean, Argentina has the Netherlands, and I think the Netherlands can probably win that game the way they've looked. And you have Brazil, Croatia. Brazil's going to be based on what we saw where they had that breakthrough moment would be the favorite. If we get Brazil, Argentina in the semis, how big? <laughs> I saw you. We're talking. I, I mean, from the games we have seen with the, how big would that be? For me, there's, there's, there's no other match that can rival that in a world cup because uh, we're talking two powerhouses of South America. I know there's a lot of good uh, teams in Europe and uh, 
uh, Germany has uh, dominate, had dominated for a long time and the, not, not, not anymore. Uh, so is Italy, but Argentina, Brazil for me is the, uh, the, the main event, you know, and, and when you have Neymar and you have Messi, their friends that when, what comes to my mind is that a picture of Neymar laughing with, uh, Messi at the end of a Copa America, that was, that was nuts. And for, for people in Brazil, that's like. I don't know. You have to be yeah. Neymar with, with the confidence that he has in his game and in, in his profile to do that, you know, and, and, and they have to be really, really, really good friends for them to get together like that. But you, you have that. And also you have Brazil playing a, 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 a spectacular style of football. And then Argentina, I wouldn't say they would be favorites against Brazil because of what, what we saw in this uh, World Cup. But still, they have Leo Messi, you know. For me, and, and if you go to the to that game against uh, Netherlands, I, I'm, I'm thinking like you that uh, it's going to be difficult for Argentina because the Netherlands has uh, a, a mastermind in Louis van Gaal and also they have defended very well. And those are the teams that have uh, made Argentina's life difficult, you know. But when you have Messi, you have a difference maker and he's playing at a very high level in this World Cup. Final thought here, Tony, uh, just about the tournament, because we know we were, this was going to inconvenience many of us, a winter world cup. And then early on in the tournament, uh, you know, the, 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 the social issues have come up and the protests and it's happened. This tournament's going to end and we will look back. And just from the footballing perspective, the games that we saw, the action we saw, how would you, how do you, will you think we'll look back at this, this competition? I would say that, that it has been a, uh, a, a very well played World Cup. Uh, I have the fear, as uh, I'm guessing we all did, that this was going to take a, a very uh, hard toll on on players, and and we saw that on the first I don't know four to five seven games with players going out of the World Cup. With I mean Gabriel Jesus went out, uh, Alex Teles, uh, and a lot of players in that first week or ten days. But uh, luckily, we haven't had that uh, that often you know in the in the last uh um matches so so that was the the big um fear for me but now everyone seems in sync you know everyone seems playing at a high level leaving behind whatever uh, um tiredness you you may have because this is in the middle of the season so this is not easy for players but i think that once you're there and once you're you keep you you start playing with your teammates with your co-nationals you know, it's the World Cup, man. Uh, everyone is going to give their best, and and I think I think we're seeing that. And and some of the parts of Qatar, the fact that they don't have to jump on an airplane, everything's there, is going to help, yeah, especially the that's teams easier, that make yes. it. Because there were thirty-two teams, so we're down to eight. Uh, if you didn't make a quarterfinal, it's uh, today's December sixth, so you have a couple weeks to cambiar las pilas, as we say in Spanish. You yeah, know, charge the batteries. But if you make a final, <laughs> December eighteenth. The English Premier League starts on the 26th. Yeah, there's so no time. There is no time. So it's not going to be great. So we, I, 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 with you, I take my hat off to these players and these coaches for getting through it, not complaining. And you can see how much it means to them. Uh, it's still a World Cup. And the emotions, when they fall short, you'll see that etched on the face of Spain and Japan and all these teams who didn't do it. So we'll enjoy the rest of it. And then we'll just pick up the leagues again, Tony, at the end of it. Tony yes, Kenke. yes. Show must go on. So show must go. Hey, man, that was great stuff. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Max. I was I was eager to join you at some point. So uh, let's let's uh, uh, make it happen again. Let's do it. Lo mejor de mundial. Check out Tony Kerki on uh, YouTube and all the social media handles. He's got a great following and a very well regarded in this sport. This brings an end to another Soccer OG World Cup Daily. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about that huge matchup that could be lurking in the semis.